Hey everyone, it's Cameron. I want to talk about the simple and sometimes not so simple mistakes that people make when they start drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I've done it enough now where I've experienced some mistakes that I've made myself and seen hundreds and hundreds of comments, Facebook messages, emails from people who have sent me problems that they're having and I've kind of been able to collect some of just what are the simplest and most likely mistakes that you'll run into if you are currently doing it or if you just started. So uh, I just want to talk about some of those things. Before we get into that, if you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot. It helps people know that I'm awesome, if I am, I guess, and it helps just get my channel out in front of a new audience. So thank you so much, and let's get into it. The first one I want to talk about is just it, it's going to it's going to be the same thing we all run into really. I I started wondering about it when I first started looking into the information about what dropshipping on Facebook really was. Um I've had so many I've answered so many comments and seen so many other people post comments about this one and it's just it's not getting started. It, it's just getting so worried about you know, okay, if I use Walmart or Amazon, is the what the customer's gonna see the packaging, the box that's gonna have their logo on it, like, and they're gonna hate that. Like, they might get a receipt in the box or some kind of invoice. No, don't worry about those things. All those little things. If you haven't start, if you haven't drop shipped or at least listed a few items, then most of your concerns don't matter yet, because just know that the other concerns are keeping you from even starting and that's your biggest hurdle. I mean, you got to list something before you know if you're doing something wrong. In the worst case, just just remember this. If you make a sale and you're just starting, let's say you sell one thing, well, you don't really have an issue yet. If you make one sale and something goes wrong, the customer can return it. And you just do a return exactly like you would if it was your item, but instead of you taking the return label or you doing whatever the step is, you just tell the customer to do it instead of you. And then when that gets returned and you get your money back, you can send that back to the customer and refund them, and then you never lost any money. You just you just basically lost some time. So if the worst, worst case scenario, which that's probably not even going to happen, just know that you're not really going to have an issue. It's fine. The customer can receive boxes and, and stuff. I I have shipped now, who knows, hundreds of things through Amazon to people. Not once have I had anybody complain that it came in an Amazon package. And I know it comes in an Amazon package because I can see in my email where they take a picture of it getting delivered. It's definitely an Amazon packaging. So don't worry about that. But that goes with all sorts of other things. I mean, they're not going to get a receipt in the box. And if they do, 90% of the people don't look at that. I've never once had anybody talk to me about a receipt in the box saying that, oh, this receipt says it only costs this, but I paid this. What is that about? Not really an issue that people run into. So <clears throat> what else? The, the Pretty much the next thing is when you do start, you, you're you listing your profit margins too small because you're selling out of your own pocket and you're not you're assuming that people aren't going to buy this because you don't have the experience yet. You're sitting there like, man, if I bought this thing off walmart.com for $20, well, I can't list that for $40. Nobody's going to buy that. They can buy it on Walmart for $20. That doesn't make any sense. You're right. That doesn't make any sense. But that is exactly how it works. Like, chant, like if okay, if you want to buy a bottle of pop or soda or whatever you call it, and, I mean, you can go to like a gas station and buy that for like three dollars, two or three dollars. But you could buy that same bottle at a dollar store for a dollar. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. But you can you can buy things, and you do all the time that are cheaper somewhere else. And there's the whole argument where every time you buy something, it was literally bought for cheaper by like two or three avenues before it even arrived to your purchase. Like. That's just how the world works. That's how commerce works. And we are e-commerce and we're adding an extra layer to that. We're taking advantage of the system a little bit. And we're just, for people who prefer to look on Facebook Marketplace, we are now taking an item that we found somewhere else, putting it here and marking it up and taking the profit, just like the person who listed it on Amazon is doing from where they bought it from. So it's, don't worry about that. You just gotta get, you, you gotta price your things 
appropriately. I shoot for, when I take an item, let's say I bought it for $10, I'm gonna list it probably for 15, maybe even 16, all the way up to $20. I'm gonna, I list my things for 50% profit. Now, I don't get 50% profit. The reason I list for 50 as a rule of thumb is because once you go to actually purchase it, the price might be raised a little bit, um, and which is another reason why you wanna price your things a little higher because when you first start, you don't have a monitoring software that's telling you if prices are increasing. You're, you're not really paying attention to if prices are increasing like you should and they do it all the time. I've run into so many times where I list an item, it goes like a week or two without selling, somebody finally buys it, and then I go to purchase it and the price is higher than when I listed it. So now my profit margin is smaller or I'm negative because I listed too too thin of a, of a margin. So I list 50% because that usually covers any kind of price fluctuation and after I have to pay sales tax on it, because chances are you're gonna have to pay sales tax on stuff when you just start, um, along with the Facebook fee, which is 5% when you're shipping stuff, that usually gets me somewhere between 30 to 40% profit when all the little hiccups are done. So I list for 50% because I don't want anything lower than really 30% if I can help it, maybe no lower than 25 because if you're going lower than those percentages, unless it's a higher priced item, the higher price of an item you get, the more that's like justifiable. But if you're listing little $20, $50 items and you're only getting 15% profit, I mean, you're you're wasting your time and you're, you're setting yourself up for failure and disappointment later, kind of. So <clears throat> disagree with that, agree with that all you want. But listing too thin when you first start sets you up for so many issues. And it's just not as rewarding when you get a sale, when you have to sell 10 items to get the same profit you could have just sold one for if you priced it properly, so or a different product or whatever. So small profit margins are definitely a beginner issue. Um, not using a spreadsheet is another one. When you start to grow and you start getting sales, it starts to get really confusing as to what exactly is my profit? Like, what, how do I keep track of this? Like. You know, oh, this person told me that they have a complaint or an issue, which don't worry about that. It's just, it's a rare thing, but still. It's really easy to go in when you have a spreadsheet and just be like, okay, yeah, this is that person's order. I know exactly the issue. Um, I can look it up here on these websites. Like it's totally so much easier if you have a spreadsheet. I do have a spreadsheet video where I, where I have a link to the spreadsheet that I use. Um, you can just do like file save for that spreadsheet and use that too. I, I still use that spreadsheet right now, but that's what I would suggest. Now, another beginner issue is waiting too long to use a software that like semi automates the process for you. Once, even if you only have like 10 sales, man, sometimes something like Z drop which is what I use a lot of the time and what a lot of us use when we first start, it saves so much time because you know, you wanna keep listing every day and ZDrop will let you, it's, it's a Chrome extension for those of you who don't know, they will let you um, just like copy stuff straight from websites and it will automatically pull up a page for you and you can paste all the information without having to you know, take however long it takes to save all the photos and copy paste everything. Like it just does it for you and it's super cool. On top of that, it'll keep track of stuff in the little extension that you have. And you can, like when somebody orders something, you can click that extension, click the picture, and it will bring the item up so that you can buy it really quick. Super nice. But that's a, you know, that's a beginner level. And then for those of you who have been doing a little bit and you already use ZDrop, something next is like, um, I'm still, you know, gonna make some more videos on it, but um, Facebook or the FBM Fox, it's the, it's like a new automation option. You know, it costs a little bit more, but it's like the next level up. It'll do, it'll help you do product research. It stores all your information for all your orders. It can auto auto price and do all that. It does everything ZDrop does, but it's also more like, you know, along the lines of what you hear AutoDS and all those things do, but it, like better in my opinion so far. Um, again, I haven't tried all those other services, but FBM Fox really does seem like a really cool new software that um, people are really enjoying and I've been enjoying it, just testing it out and working with it. So, but that's like kind of like when you wanna level up a little bit. You, you can use ZDrop to begin with, um, 
and then FBM Fox or something like that when you want to level up. So I'm to that point now. For those of you who are like, oh, what are you talking about or whatever, I have links in the descriptions for both of those. Um, I have a coupon code for ZDrop. It gets you $9 a month is the cost of it instead of the original $10 a month is which what ZDrop normally costs. Pretty cheap entry level thing and it'll make you money because it makes you a lot faster at listing. So, I mean, technically you'll make your money back way quicker on, uh, on ZDrop than if you weren't using it, in my opinion. Now, something like FBM Fox, more expensive, um, but my coupon code for that gives you 10% off your first month. And give it the seven day free trial on FBM Fox and test it out, test all of its features out, watch the YouTube videos from their YouTube page and kind of see like, ooh, is this for me? Because I think it will be. I've already made, I think in the first five days or in the first, I think it only took five days, but within the time of the seven day free trial, I made enough money to pay for FBM Fox most expensive package in less than a week. So I think you'd easily make your money back on that. But that's just a little bit about softwares. Using these softwares can help you automate some of it or at least just list five times faster, 10 times faster, because that is what up to my game a little bit. It was kind of annoying to copy paste everything. Anyway, I'm being really slow now. <clears throat> Um, another thing is just not setting aside taxes when you do get paid for things. So um, once a month, I calculate all my profit that I made from my spreadsheet, and then I multiply that number by 0.15. So I'm just you know seeing what 15% of that number is. You can do more than that. You can do a little bit less than that, but I wouldn't go much less than there. Um, it's all depending on your state, kind of. And then I basically, if there's money in the account, that matches that number, that's the you know the end of that equation basically. So my profit multiplied by 0.15, which is 15%, I take that and I ship it off to an online savings account so I save it for taxes for the end of the year. That's what I do for all my self-employment income that I get. So I would hate for you guys to start, be super successful, never thought about taxes once, and then you get to the end of the year, you had $60,000 in profit, and now you owe thousands of dollars in taxes that you weren't saving. So it's really easy to say, oh, well, I'm gonna make so much money. I'll just you know, not take profit for the last month that I do of the year or whatever. It's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Just be responsible and save your money over time so that, but when it comes to the thing, it's just, when it comes to the tax season, you can just be like, oh, this is what it's for. And you might actually not even have to spend all that money. You get a little bonus at the end, so. That's one of the biggest things I would recommend. It's just really easy to look over when you first get started because you're so excited about having this money and you just want to use it all. Um, other than that, not experimenting or just trying to copy everybody else's products. You know, at the end of each month, I give away my top five selling products to help new people like you um, get their first sale or two so that you can really feel and, and be like, okay, you can kind of go through the motion. Here's how I fulfill an order because sometimes it's really hard to, to do that for yourself. It shouldn't be, but some people just struggle with it more than others. But the issue after that, once you get through that part, is not experimenting with categories. You know, I, I get so many questions all the time. It's like, what's the best selling category right now? It's like, you need to experiment because people who find those selling categories are the people experimenting or the people who have enough experience to just know what time of year it is because the time of year matters too. I mean, what when you are hanging out with family or like what are the things that you hear people are saying they just got or, or or you know if you walk around your backyard or just your own life and you're like oh yeah me and my girlfriend or me and my wife or you know thinking about getting this or me and my partner or whatever like just think about what you're looking into buying because of the time of year it is or what your family's like all that you know what i'm saying just what's happening in your real life that you can pull inspiration from to find like oh yeah these kind of products sell and then also sell the most, look up the most random stuff and list it. Because so far, like some of my hottest selling things are just stuff like I was on my drive home and I just thought of something. I was like, oh, I'll list that. I never thought it would sell. And then it just blew up and I sold hundreds of them. So experimenting is the best thing. And I tell people that all the time and I'm sure they're like, oh, what a worthless piece of information. But I found over and over again, Every time one blows up, I'm like, damn, I'm so glad I, I experimented with that because that's, I never would have sold this if I didn't just do something stupid and sell this instead. So 
I mean, those are my biggest things. I've got plenty more, but like those, the other things are kind of small. They're not really that big of deals, but yeah, I appreciate you watching. Um, again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video if you haven't, because that really helps me out. And let me know uh, what kind of mistakes you've made in the comments, you know, or, or things that you think other people could learn from. The whole point of this channel, of course, is to talk about drop shipping and stuff. But the main purpose is to catch you guys that just start or are in the middle of starting and to help you kind of ramp up into uh, an easier, easier experience drop shipping, basically, so I can help you guys out so that you guys don't have to buy a course or something if you don't want to. So ask your questions you know if you really do have issues that or something not what i just talked about ask them and join the facebook group we have a facebook group now that i think that like over 1200 people and it's all people answering questions and having discussions over stuff i just talked about so don't think just because you're new you can't ask the questions we're we're there to help you thank you so much and i will see you next time